Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Livewire Gaming Show. We only had one this week, but we make it a long one to make up for it. And this week we're going to talk <laughs> about our halftime game of the year, so we're halfway through the year. So we're going to talk about what our contenders are, potentially at this point, for game of the year. Um, obviously before that we'll catch up and see what everyone's been up to. And um, without digging too deep into it, because that kind of ruins the topic for later. Anyway, what have you guys been up to? How are you? Bill, go for it. Yes, same same as usual. Just playing my normal routine of games. I finished off um, Ratchet and Clank today, actually, this afternoon. So I was going to GameStop tomorrow. <laughs> no, because Kathy only got into it, so I have to keep it for at least another couple of weeks. But um. Yeah, do you know what? I enjoyed it gradually as the game went on. As you unlock more weapons, um, it does kind of add more fun to it. Like, the fights, because like I was playing it on normal difficulty, and I did feel like the boss fights were just like, hold down, shoot, jump every 30 seconds from a laser beam, or just move to the left. So, throwing in that kind of rotation of weapons kind of made it a little bit more interesting. <clears throat> um, yeah, no, it was good. The, the story... Like it was, it was fine. It was a kid story, a lot of cheesy, cheesy, yeah. cheesy stuff. <laughs> but if it wasn't, a, if it wasn't the like, I, like I was saying to Stephen earlier on, I wouldn't pay full price for a game like that. The PS5 um, stuff in it, like in terms of the um, the triggers and stuff like that, and just the the visuals alone and the power, you could actually feel that it was processing so much at one time and there was not a peep out of it. That was really nice. Yeah, Never had a stutter in frames. Well, yeah. It's oh, that that was the best thing about it. Um so that kind of made me want to keep playing more just because I thought the environment looked looked fantastic. But um yeah, I'm happy I'm finished it because it was kind of one of those I just want to finish it for the sake of finishing it. Um I got the new game plus menu and I says, "No. Nah. <laughs> Return me back to the title <laughs> screen, please." Um yeah, so I'm happy I done that. That's my first PS5 game done. Um, I was playing WoW quite a bit this week. The new Chains of Domination update came out, so new area, new stuff to collect. So I'm in that. Um, playing Outer Worlds. That's really yeah. Playing Apex, just the usual. Nothing Speaking exciting. of um, WoW, have you seen the the waves coming from Asmongold being in Final Fantasy 14 now? Yeah, like he's the he's the only one that I actually watch on a daily basis, um, like str just across any game, and um, yeah, like it's he he said he's gonna be playing it because at the high end, where well isn't very appealing right now, um, it's kind of catered to um casuals, which is great if you are a casual, but just the, the, like with the new update, it was just a lot of criticism, and it was the longest patch time that they had since release so it's been like since last october till now this is the first like rare seasonal update so there was a lot of lot banking on it so a lot of the high-end people aren't happy but yeah it's it's like anything it's happy to try out other games <laughs> but i think like, he, he plays final fantasy the mmo off um off stream sometimes so yeah one of, it's one of those things it's if your game isn't doing it for you go play something else <laughs> you know and have you but been then again he was streaming the fucking the raid the other night to like 120k people like the new raid came out for wow and it's just like it's ridiculous like yeah crazy so i don't think someone of his kind of standards is gonna hinder on that too much from trying out a new title but he tries out all the new mmos like that new world one coming out in the end of the year or the end of the summer um, oh yeah yeah but yeah and have you been tempted to play it yourself now from watching nope. him no nope. nope. do you know i watched one stream or i had no sorry i had just um audio on one stream while i was playing and it's just I, I i like listening to him talk rather than watching his gameplay with other games um but yeah i th i think it's it's just like i was saying a minute ago just that human kind of anime look in an mmo i don't know I don't know. I'm oh, still only in testing over. the waters in MMO universes, so I kind of just want to stick with one for now. <laughs> like, as, as good as some of the others do look, it just, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Like, there's a lot to learn. It's not just, like, a pick-up-and-play for the first while. Like, there's a lot of learning to do. 
So mm. I've still got a lot of learning to do in WoW. So sorry, no fantasy for now. Someday I'll get you. Someday you'll get me. You'll get us someday, yeah. Stephen. Well, when I get to the high end WoW content, and then they're not releasing stuff to cater for my needs, I'll be like, I'm going elsewhere. So you've got you've got about twenty years worth of catch up to do. So <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But yeah. What have you been up to, Stephen? Um, not much really. Now I played a bit more of Returnal since last week. Um, Biome Five was kicking my ass. Um, you have to get three keys, and I I don't know what it was like up to up until Biome Four. I was doing fine. Like you'd have the random deaths where you have a bad run or whatever. But jeez, Biome Five just fuck off, Kev. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, can't relate, but no, can't relate. Never seen the inside of a ship. What's it look like? But um, Jesus, Biome Five was just for me. That's where the difficulty came in because you had to go through the three different rooms, which had three different kind of obstacles. So one is a boss challenge room, one is an enemy gauntlet, and then the last one is like a mixture between platforming and enemies and bosses. So. I quickly realized I had one really weak room, which was like the, the enemy gauntlet room. So I just consistently run to that one. And once I cleared that, I knew I'd had a better run for rooms two and three, but then you just get screwed in the bot. Like in one of the boss rooms, I got the, uh, I got three of the severed coming in, which are the alien life oh, forms. Oh yeah. Um, I saw that room. Three I'm looking forward to that room. Yeah. I got three of those plus all the alien dogs at the same time and it was like nah this is too fucking much so that killed me um but eventually eventually plowed through that one so i'm on the final biome which is nice but also a fucking clusterfuck mm. um i can't wait to do the final biome it looks incredible yeah oh it's cool it it fucks with you mechanically yeah. because of the way it is yeah because um, you're underwater so it's slower moving yeah, yeah. So you jump higher, your dash goes a bit further, but you're a lot slower. Um, but look, still loving it, but it is like, this is where I'm finding the difficulty kicking in. So the first parts were fairly easy. Um, and unlike some people, I can not jump off the ledge constantly. So I choose my moments. Yeah. Very frequent moments. I'll add. In, in boss fights. In boss fights, mostly. At least That's it's not like parts. Dark Souls, though, where you jump off the edge and you're dead. This one just takes a little chunk of your health off and you go again. True. That, that would actually be very fucking How harsh. many, um, just out of curiosity, how many deaths are you up to at the moment on that playthrough? No idea. A lot. At this stage, I'd say it's a lot. Yeah. It's probably like 50 or 60. Oh, wow. Fair enough. It's just, like, up until Biome 4, I probably only had maybe five deaths. And is that biome including completing just... biome four yeah oh, okay fair enough so yeah we're on about yeah. the same track then fair enough yeah so biome five just fucked me royally for about 40 deaths i'd say wow just constantly i was um i was um, kind of disappointed to find out that there's no actual boss in biome five that you i, I was so happy when i found that out <laughs> no i was like oh i've only got one boss fight left and it's the last boss oh i love these boss oh. fights they're great but if I had to do the keys every time to get to the boss, yeah. I think I'd I think I'd rage quit. But that's uh, fair enough. Because the keys don't like just because you get one key, it doesn't they're not permanent. So each yeah. time there was one where I was in the last room to pick up the last key and I died and I had to go start it all again. I was like, no. But it's also if you if you die on the boss in biome six, you have to do the five key the three keys again, do you? I think. Mm. <laughs> I think you do. It's, it's one. I think it's one key for oh, the okay. final boss. Okay. Yeah. You have to get. You have to get a permanent equipment upgrade, and then it's one key. Ah, that's that's not so bad. I haven't got I that far. I've only. Them. I only got as far as Biome Five, and I haven't been able to play since Monday. Yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking yeah. forward to diving back in. Yeah. So that's been quite literally my week mostly. Yeah, diving in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't I literally haven't done anything else. Been feeling shit all week. So, uh, what about I did you? Have to laugh. Before I go into that, I had to laugh. When the game first came out, I was just 
clicking through um twitch streams just been like ah oh, see what this returnal game looks like and i accidentally clicked on lyric stream who was in the final biome and ended up fighting the final boss so i saw the end of the game i was like oh <laughs> great i clicked on the wrong stream <laughs> so you know what happens yeah I, I know the end of the game um it hasn't reduced my enjoyment of it at all but like i know like uh skill up didn't show off the final biome in his review and he only showed off the first two bosses to keep a lot of it secret which is fair mm. enough because as the further you get into that game it's more of a, a spectacle in different ways but um so yeah I, i've basically kind of done the same as you steven um after watching you play through the first four bosses of Return on watching your videos on that, I decided to go and impulse buy it. Um, played that over last weekend and got basically caught up with you, I think. I got up to as far as Biome 5. I had one good play sitting where I just didn't die for, what was it, seven and a half hours or something in the end. I just didn't die. Yeah. I only lost it because the game my one criticism of it really so far has been that the longer your um run is going the it kind of performance kind of dips as you're alive it's like it's still processing all of the rooms you've been in so by doing mm. all running all of that at once the performance of the actual game goes down so i just closed the game after completing biome 4 because i didn't have a great setup so when you complete biome 3 um, act one of the game ends and you go to act two of the game which is biomes four to six and at that point you lose the gear that you had at the end of act one which is biome three and i was fucking heartbroken when this happened because i have an amazing setup i had two revot two like so i had an astronaut and i had something else i had a great gun i had like 190 percent of my health bar i had crazy high weapon for it i just had everything it was the perfect setup and then it took it all away on me but yeah i caught up with you on that over the weekend um but apart from that i haven't really had i've had three football matches this week so gaming's been oh, like nice. put in the back burner so um didn't really have time for much else and then work was reasonably busy this week and then destiny some playing some of the new destiny stuff dipped into attempted the master version of the vault of glass raid that was a train wreck and a half um and the uh, summer the solstice stuff came out as well so i've been grinding through that and in fairness it's not actually that much of a grind so i'm just getting the gear sets done on that um but yeah i'll probably jump back into returnal either tonight or tomorrow i haven't really decided when yet um mm -hmm. Probably not tomorrow, actually, because I'm busy tomorrow. I have another match. I have another match tomorrow. <laughs> but, yeah, apart from that, it's been a lot of football this week. So, haven't been embracing the nerd gaming lifestyle. That's unlike you, but sure. Had to get the car yeah. NCT, and, of course, the car failed its NCT on something very fucking stupid that I have no control over. So, that cost me a couple of hundred quid. So, it does. That's what they do. I heard a squeak. Did you? Cool. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. So. Yeah. One of those. Big mind shooting NCT. Oh, next okay. month. My uh, my driver's license is expired next month as well, so that's more fun. Oh, you get a ten months. Um, yes. Ten months extension to that. Yes. So. That's fine. My driver's license not expired next month. I have another ten months. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Grad. Shall we move on? So we can move on, I guess. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So our our game of the year contenders. Um. I think we won't be doing remakes or remasters or next gen upgrades because I think they technically aren't out this year, unless it's the likes of I don't know Tony Hawk's got a, a full remake. So that's different. But like next gen upgrades probably aren't fair to include um but i think we will kind of dip into games that we also haven't played ourselves for whatever reason but could potentially be contenders but i think we'll 
try and stick to what our contenders for game of the year but are. I, I think as well, it's probably worth clarifying that the, whether we think it's a game of the year contender, as in the you know the objectively this is game of the year, or is no, it no, a subjective? No, no. Error, I'd say go subjective. I think we'll do. Yeah, because... I think we'll do a subjective one where we kind of think this is what our game of the year so far is, or our games of the year so far, and then we could maybe touch on potential ones as well at the end of what. Yeah. What we haven't played, but could potentially be that. Mm -hmm. Stephen, do you want to kick us off? Fine. Well, I I do and I don't because I think we know what I'm going to say so far, and it it is hands down it's eternal. Um, it's when I look back, like I've been looking through lists of games that have come out this year, and I kind of realize that there hasn't hasn't really been a great year for new no. games. It um, hasn't. We've had it straight up hasn't. Like we've had, we've had a few. Like we've had okay, Outriders, a new IP wasn't for me. Um, like we we've had a few things come out where you could have seen them as potential game of the year contenders. But that just hasn't materialized. Um, but Jesus, Returnal is just such a sleeper hit for me. Um, because when it came out, like reviews were great, but there was always this like qualifying aspect to it of like, no, um, there's this issue with the save state that basically you can't pop you you can't save the game mid cycle, so you have to go into rest mode, which means you could get an error, you could get an update, you could get a firmware update, and you could lose your progress. And that threw me off straight away. I was like, I'm not touching this game because not only is it like a, a rogue light where you lose everything upon death, but to then lose it because of a real life thing like a power cut or a fucking an update, like the game Returnal itself updates. You're like, what the fuck? So I just didn't touch it and bought it there in the sale last week, the week before. And the game does not deserve the criticism that it gets like that kind of cycle progression issue is it's not really an issue because if you die and you reset it doesn't take a lot to get okay you might not get the same stats you had like you could have had 200 percent health you could have had the best weapon that you've had up until that point and so on it's like but to get back into the game it takes very little effort mm -hmm. and as you go deeper into the game you start to notice patterns so i notice in biome 4 the first room will be an enemy room, but the second room will always be either a consumable or a new weapon. So, like, you don't have to go too far. You can run past the first room, get your new weapon, and then you're set again, so you don't have to use your sidearm. Um, so there's, like, these little quality of life things that stop your reset cycle from being as harsh as people made it out to be. And the game just looks gorgeous. The soundtrack is amazing. The sound design, the environment design how the, the environment that's like how the sound and the environments and the storytelling come together to tell a story beyond the exposition is just fantastic like it's probably one of the best told stories without being told that i've experienced because normally you have the exposition and the oh my god moment that doesn't happen you have little things that happen throughout the game throughout scout logs even reading the xenoglyphs and you're like mm. actually that's something that's really cool because in the xenoglyphs you you pick up um you learn the language as you go through the game and you pick up different translations but as you do it you get like there's mixed translations so there seems to be like the alien speaking and then there's Celine speaking mm. and they're they're telling of different events but they link together but the way that they're told you're, you're kind of getting this duality of like well what's happening on astropor versus what's happening on earth and they seem disconnected but they're not and it's just it's just this really cool thing of like and it comes up with this accuracy measure as well so i noticed one of them i fully trans translated and normally it's like accuracy is about 70 percent 60 percent 30 percent this one's fully translated and the accuracy says one percent but it's giving so much of the story away and i'm like okay what's going on here now like why why is this fully translated to a proper narrative that makes sense to where the story is going because i can see where it's going and it's telling me oh it's only one percent accurate so there's all these little things like this is really cool I, I really want to know what's going on and just 
yeah, like I I'm, I can gush about the game for hours on end, and I probably would if you let me. But it's not it's not as difficult as people think it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. It runs very well for a set period of time, and then it starts kind about of about four and a half five up. hours, and then it starts. To, yeah, you get you get frame drops after that. Um, and it is like if you enjoy a game that does more than just tell you a story like if you appreciate environmental design the inclusion of sound and how important that is to the experience and the narrative and um, if you enjoy even just good gameplay where you don't have to be super accurate like you can just point and click and it feels like you're doing all the work but it's just so aim assisty but you don't mind it because it's so hectic and even when you're dodging bullets it's just so like it's you have to kind of stop in awe it's so beautiful because you're like all these beautiful colors are coming at you and you know they're going to kill you if they touch it but it's just it's it's so satisfying to watch and learning the patterns of bosses and how to dodge them and when you watch back someone else's gameplay like i've seen all of kez videos and his style of playing is different to mine but even seeing how he navigates the boss encounters to compare i miss something on every boss encounter have you noticed that there's always what there's always one thing i miss Mm -hmm. oh yeah there's one thing that always nails you hard and and it gets me every time the boss does it i just don't adapt there's always one thing i don't adapt to for whatever reason i I adapt everything else i get perfectly but there's one thing i just never get on the every single boss so far yeah so for me (laughs) on boss two it was falling off the edge yeah the uh there's nothing that comes close with this year like for me it's returnal and i'm sad that i've waited this long to play it but i'm also glad because it's just such a it's such a great game it's yeah. for me so far it's definitely game of the year and i think objectively it's up there as i can't see anything dethroning this year and we can talk about that later but at the moment in this half of the year nothing is coming close to it for me yeah and i think objectively the only things that are getting there are possibly ratchet and clank maybe resident evil village but yeah i think i'll i'll come in with returnal as well because we might as well get it out of the way and i'll say my piece on it um i was completely on the fence about it i didn't like it was one of those that was like i'll pick it up at some point i'll pick it up when Mm. it's either on ps plus or in some sony sale or some gamestop sale i'll get it in a few months time that i'm i want to play it because it interests me but it didn't grip me from the off like i remember when we were watching the playstation 5 the reveal yeah i me and you steven kind of went ah no i don't know that looks it looks interesting but no not for me and i was i was i put my hands up and say i've never been more wrong about a game i can't remember a game i was more wrong about i'm i'm completely in love with the game i think it's 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 it just hits everything perfectly for me there's not there's no part of it where i go i'd like to improve that I think the only part that you could maybe argue it is if you if your PlayStation loses power or something, I don't know, that you have a one save point or something. I don't know how they'd want to do it, but I don't I also don't think it needs that because as you were saying, it's not actually as punishing. Like a lot of the discourse around it was on, oh, I had this great run going and then I died and lost everything and I had to start right at the beginning of the game. That's not really how it works. Like, I learned... Mm. So, I can't remember when I had... I had my first death. Um, Some of the ways through Biome 2, I had a death where I... I can't remember what happened. But I had a decent setup. I'd beaten the boss in Biome 1, moved through Biome 2, and then died doing something stupid. I can't remember what it was. But I was like, oh, I have to start again. But then I realized real quickly, I just need to run through maybe five or six rooms of Biome 1, get a little bit of gear and a gun that I liked using. And I was like, right, I'm ready. Let's go back to Biome 2. And you kind of learn that as you go along that you don't have to go through every single room to have the best loadout the whole time. Now, you have, if you're of... In a lower skill bracket, maybe, you might want to have more upgrades to feel safer. But I was like, no, I've got a decent gun, I've got a heal, and I've got, I don't know, I've got a de- couple of decent parasites. I'm ready to go, let's go, let's just go and attack it, and if I die, fine. 
But I found that that's the case the whole way through the game. That it's not actually... Like, I, I can't remember who said it. I was like, oh, imagine in Dark Souls, if you died on a Dark Souls boss, and you had to go all the way back to the start of that level. It's not like that. It's a bad analogy, because... I don't really know, I can't really think off that why it, it's a bad analogy, but it's not the same as with a Dark Souls boss, because it's not as difficult to get back to where you were, it's, you can get a couple of pieces of gear quickly, and then move through the game and go, oh, I'm getting better gear, and now, oh, I've got the gun I like, but I've got a better version of it, and then, yeah, so I don't think it's nearly as punishing as people say, but on the good parts of it, it is, and it is one of the best looking games I've played in a long time. Um, the way like it is ray tracing enabled, so and to run as it does, and it's at sixty fps. I'm pretty sure with ray tracing yeah. enabled, and there's a lot of lighting in this game. Like all of the enemies fired at it's the um, bullet. What's the word? bullet hell? Bullet, yeah. And they're all different colors and they're all illuminated they all look amazing and then the sound design as you touched on like there's so much going on in every single fight and you can hear everything and mm. that's kind of incredible that there, it can be there can be 10 different noises and you can hear every single one individually and that's me playing through my tv by the way that's not with a, a with the headset on either i can imagine it's even better with the headset and then the boss yeah, fights in, the boss fights in this game like boss biome fight for boss four but the boss fight for biome four is get gets a lot of recognition because of the the soundtrack playing and as you get closer to it it gets louder and blah 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 the story related stuff in there and that kind of overshadows the rest of them but the four bosses i've fought so far were all spectacular in their own way um i think the gunplay is great the movement system is great. Um, obviously, it helps that there's crazy amounts of aim assist. Um, and I think it's quite funny. You talk about my di my play style, how it differs to yours. One thing I noticed was from people who play a lot of competitive first-person shooters, how they play this game in comparison to how other people play it is quite funny because they're trying to hit every shot as a crit. Whereas this game doesn't require you to do that it's more about dodging it's more about dodging what's coming at you staying alive making sure you're staying alive and just keeping your gun firing over and over and you'll if you can do that you'll eventually take down the boss as long yeah. as you're not getting hit you'll eventually take it down where i found i was watching i can't remember who it was but they were they're a high tier destiny player they hit every single crit and they hit every single overload they didn't miss a single overload in their fight, but they were getting hit by the boss's stuff a lot. Whereas it's, when it's I watched... This leopard, is it? I can't remember who it was. But when I was, I was watching, watching me or you playing it, I was hip-firing most of the time. And, you know, it's going in the general direction of the boss, it's fine. As long as I don't get hit, I'm good. Um, but yeah, this the soundtrack is incredible as well. Um, and then the story... The story kind of... <sighs> It's not kind of, here's your narrative, it's in your face, like, say, The Last of Us, or a naughty, like, it was mm -hmm. like, here's your story, here's the story we're telling you. It's kind of like, here's what's going on, uh, try, f here's, we're gonna give it to you, here's your exposition, but we're gonna let you kind of figure out in your head what's actually going on. Because, like, I could take something from it that's totally different from what you may take from it. Like, we could both mm -hmm. have, we could both interpret the endings in completely different ways, now, I've seen the ending, and I won't get into it, and it's the case of, I'm quite new to the roguelite genre, and from what I read up on it was that the journey is better than the destination in a lot of roguelites, and it's probably the same, it's the same case here for Returnal as far as I could tell, um... But yeah, the, the journey's incredible. It really is. I, I, it's, I was looking at what's coming out for the rest of the year, and I don't think anything will take its place for me. Now, this took me by surprise, so maybe something else will take me by surprise. But I think this will probably be my game of the year when I look back. 
Um, the only thing stopping it is that it is still only halfway through the year. But I think this is definitely a contender for me, and I think a contender overall as well. I think there was, I didn't mention, but what was really cool as well is that um, if you have the app, your PlayStation app on your phone, <laughs> If your fr- if your friend, I I knew Kev had the game because it alerted me when he died. It said your your friend Scout Kev G uh, was last seen in the overgrown ruins. Go and avenge him. I was like, yeah, you haven't yeah, got like, many of them though, have you? No, I haven't. I haven't got any of you. That's I'm kind of disappointed about that. I haven't died. No, but I just I haven't got any of those notifications. I've been kind of gutted about. I it, think that. maybe it's because you're not up to where i am like now that you are you might Ooh, but you see him in biome 6 it. now that's potentially so it, yeah. but it's cool and as well i don't know if you got this one but when you die you sometimes leave yeah. a uh what's it call it a mal mal what's the word uh malignancy mal, no uh, the, 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 just like, i know where someone else can scan it and they can yeah, avenge you yeah you're, you're, you're yeah, they can avenge your corpse because your corpse yeah. gets, fe- gets you infected. You get you get that push notification when someone's avenged you. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, cool. so that, it's like things like that are cool. So uh, that's sort of. I think my one thing about it back, but... is like I don't think Celine is that likable of a character, <laughs> but um... it, it's the whole what's going on with Celine. What's why is she here? Is she actually even here? um all that sort of it's very it's trying to figure that out it's quite interesting but as a character it's like eh, take it or leave it have you read have you read any of the audio log or not the audio log the like ship logs in the ship no no i haven't i haven't been there so because there's more (laughs) there's more stuff in there about what goes on kind of like on the main ship and it's interesting because you're saying you don't think celine's a likable character and that's kind of backed up by the way she acts with other people yeah um but yeah it's good i must like, say like, it's like some of the horror elements in the house as well are it, it's like there's times where i'm like right gotta turn on the kitchen light for this part fucking ask yeah. this astronaut suit haunting me that part where have you seen that one the astronaut in the kitchen and you're uh <laughs> you're having breakfast with him <laughs> yeah and then there's yeah, the part where I was, I was like i was exploring back after getting the zip thing the zip line, whatever yeah. you call it. And I was looking up for where I could go. And there was an astronaut just standing at the top of the map looking down. I was kind of like, this is fucking weird. And then when I got up there, it was gone. Yeah, as soon as you turn the camera away, he disappears. Yeah. 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 It's fucking, cool. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm glad how wrong I was about it because... I'm absolutely loving my time playing it and I can't wait to give Dill the end of it when he feels like playing it because yeah it's it's a special like it is a special game and maybe I'm a bit because I've never played a roguelite before I'm a because I'm fresh to the genre I'm kind of like oh this is amazing because it's totally it's something totally new to me so maybe I'm kind of a bit more favorable towards it because of that but I'm still loving my time with it, and it it deserves a lot of praise. Agreed. Dude, you've been quiet for a while. Let's bring you in there. <laughs> I'm happy. Just yeah, you guys go off in your eternal tangents. Do, you have, do you have any questions about it? No, I'll we'll like, return to it later. We'll even story to. spoilers and stuff. I'm not like against hearing it because I know it's not a narrative driven game. It's not. It's exactly like you said, Kev. It's more so your experience through it rather yeah. than the culmination of it at the end and i think yeah I've, I've, I've accepted that so anything i see or hear it's like i'm not gonna let it hinder my experience at all yeah well i um, saw the, i literally saw the ending cutscene of the game <laughs> completely yeah and like if you had to yeah. saw that in like a triple a story oh, driven game you'd kind of be like oh, i've avoided this for so long and i can't believe it's happened blah blah, blah. but yeah i'll eventually yeah. get to it yeah no it's um I think one thing about it, just before we do move on quickly, I wanted to say it was, there was that article, oh, was, no, oh, sorry, it wasn't the article, it was the Days Gone director was talking about how Sony 
are only focused on their big triple A's and playing it safe and what and this game came out not long after it and it was a massive middle finger towards that whole nonsense because as a PS exclusive this is totally like disconnected from that formula that they've been doing like if you look at and this isn't a bad thing it's clearly worked for them but the likes of the last of us the uncharted games spider-man uh god of war even they follow a formula and they're all great games don't get me wrong they're all very successful games but they follow that fo that sony triple a exclusive formula and returnal is completely broken away from all that so I think it it was a brave game to make as par, as a PS exclusive because it's not generally what PlayStation players are used to in their exclusives. But I feel like the developers got the reward because it is a spectacular game. Sorry, I'm done now. Well, it's a bit like the way Death Stranding was. Like, yes. It's not just your generic. Yeah. 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 Very true. Yeah. So what you're saying is Kojima really made Returnal. It was all Kojima mm. all along. I think everyone who works with Sony just has a different perspective on the treatment because mm -hmm. like you see the article that came out was it last week or the week before about the oh, yeah. the indie developer who couldn't <laughs> The article or the series of tweets. The yeah, the fucking, <laughs> yeah, the thread we'll call it. Um where like yeah. from from his point of view, like they got royally fucked as a studio in trying to yeah. basically do anything that they wanted, yeah. that they weren't told you're doing this. It seems yeah. that Sony are very. It's who, it's who you're dealing with more so. Yeah, it's who's your very point of contact to... rather than. Yeah, yeah, that too. Like anything, Possibly, like yeah. any business. It's like but Sony it sounds... are really willing to push their big AAA titles, whereas if you're an indie developer, it's kind of like now you have you have to do the heavy lifting for us, for you, for us, and it's like we're not really going to help you along here at all. And you have to yeah. apply to put on sale. <laughs> yeah, I think that was yeah. the part that a lot of people were kind of like, what, what the fuck is... What? Seriously? Because you can imagine, as an indie game, you'd, you'd yeah. want to kind of hit as many people's yeah. attention yeah. on day on release. 100%. And if someone sees it for 20 quid rather than 40 or 50 quid, you'd kind of be like, yeah, I'll try it. Add it but to the library, I'll get like, to it. Even if it's like, oh, 20 euro, but on launch day, it's 70.99. People go, oh, it's 2 yeah. euro, I'll give it a go. Mm. Yeah. But just in that kind of thing, it feels like you're you're not working with them, you're working for them. And I know that's yeah. probably what it is contractually and stuff like that, but you don't want to kind of make it feel like that. If you were Sony, you'd like to kind of make the developers feel like it's one big blanket and we're all yeah. in it together. But no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah. definitely... Um, but, I mean, if they keep churning like out what they're churning out, I don't care. <laughs> That's the thing. It's very hard to get too pissed off about it when, yeah. A, you're not really affected by it because you're not in the industry. Yeah. yeah and mm. that's probably a bit of a shitty thing to say, but unfortunately, it's like anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, amount of injustice anything. going on everywhere, yeah, but if you're not in the know, it's, yeah. or if it doesn't directly affect you, it's very hard to. Yeah. And B, because, yeah, just pumping out so much high quality stuff, it's kind of like, but this is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like it's everyone like... kind of it's like each company has their kind of whistleblower moment yeah. every couple of months to kind of yeah. push back and it, it it doesn't get the traction obviously that they're they're hoping for but, no. or it will for a couple of days and yeah. then it's back under the rug because of everything else that's happening mm -hmm. it's ubisoft's the flavor of the last couple of days i actually like I mean... that I, am i the only one that actually likes that concept not in Sorry, hold of... on. Hold on a second. Can we can we rewind some of our old Destiny chats about how Dill hates strip-fed content in a live service yeah, model? Yeah, but... And put that in here right I've now and remind the... him. <laughs> no, not drip-fed content, but live service doesn't have to be the way Destiny are doing live service. Like, I think it was Jason Schreier earlier on that was talking about it. it was like... And this is kind of what I had in my head, whereas like they still have their November releases and stuff like that. But it's like you're Desmond and each expansion is whatever timeline you're jumping into. And it's still a fully fleshed out experience, 
hopefully, but I think you still have that opportunity to not like you can take more chances with kind of smaller mm-hmm. aspects of history rather than being like this needs to be like a how how many hours are the games like fucking uh, hundreds like of 50 hours, fifty or sixty hours yeah. minimum. Now, Whereas like. it won't need to have that big depth every year when you can kind of have these smaller ones kind of thrown in. I think that concept is really cool, but it's it's Ubisoft, so yeah. I think <laughs> I that's what like people are saying. We want the more not linear but narrow structure, scope, streamlined. structure yeah. streamlined experience and ubisoft basically went <laughs> nope but that, that to me that's what the first trilogy was it was like you're desmond in the hub yeah. and you're going exploring this person's past or your ancestor so like take the live service as the hub you're desmond as a character and this expansion you're going to Vi- uh, valhalla you're going to the brotherhood area you're going to fucking the black flag you know i think that that could be pretty cool and it, obviously yeah it's so i kind of a pinch of salt with, because of who it is but yeah i kind of grew out of assassin's creed after black flag i think it was so i'm not really one to i'm not gonna deep dive into an opinion on it because it's something that i'm mm. not really interested in anyway um i just had to laugh like none of the stuff they said expels anything about microtransactions or pay to win <laughs> nonsense which is probably what's gonna be rife in that sort of yeah. thing which is where the issues come in but yeah well like there, there's avengers as a, a live service like it has all that bullshit with it but you get your campaign bursts like the way destiny used to be you have your your big drops and like there's three of them so far and yeah, it's it's like anything. If you're gonna have the the bad side of it with microtransactions, and unfortunately, like with Avengers, the way each character has their own fucking battle pass, but for want of a better word, that you have to pay separately for each one. It so, leaves a bad taste. <laughs> yeah, when when you when you kind of harp in on those kind of things, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a bad service, but it could be done right. And I think <laughs> Assassin's Wars Creed needs that kind of revival. Like I know Valhalla was huge because it took that gap, didn't it, for two two years? Was it? Mm. It is. Yeah. Um, two, and it's and I I, I actually want to play it. I'm just waiting for it to go on sale. I don't want to play it on PS5. Um, it's on but... sale in Smiths. It's very cheap at the moment. Go check it. I saw no, literally yeah. when I was there, I was looking at it like 20 minutes ago. It's actually quite oh, no. um affordable in Smiths at the moment. I can't That's buy any more games for the next two weeks. It's 40 quid. Shit, is it? It's 40 quid. 40. Shit, son. I got it confused with uh, Jedi Fallen Order, which is 25. Ah, but yeah. that's that's the gold edition, which is the game and the season pass. Yeah, it's out okay. of stock. It's fine. It's out of stock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> False alarm. There you go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like it's, I think something like that, it's, it's like anything. We all want story games, but sto- or narrative-driven games, but like nowadays, that's kind of taking the back burner. Yeah. These big AAA companies want to have the most current trend like it was be yours and now it's live service so yeah so what's next just has to go through the go through the motions and then it I will think be MMOs are coming to the forefront again at the moment i think they've just always been there <laughs> yeah but I, I've, I've seen quite a lot of people that would never have touched it like you've seen people going into the likes of Final Fantasy now that like have never spoken about it all of a sudden they're like oh my god i love this game it's all I yeah. can think about. Yeah. Now, are these all Destiny people? Yes. Because then it happens with Destiny having a bit of a drought itself. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, it's... Like, these these games are always there. It's like... Yeah. I'd never heard or knew anything about World of Warcraft because it's not in the the main publish, published fucking articles for, that I look at. It's not... It's not front of front of house for a lot of places. But when you actually start following the right things, it's it's everywhere for me now, you yeah. know. So you can kind of tune it to your interests. But I think MMOs are just strong because, mm-hmm. like, they've all been around for years. So, like, longevity is, is nothing new to them. True. That's true. And you got, I, I've been enjoying dipping into my one-time playthrough experiences, my narrative-driven stuff. It's been... In- I've played a few in recent times and I've been, it's been fun because 
as a Destiny player, as somebody who plays Destiny that time, you kind of net don't finish a lot of games. Yeah. So it's been fun finishing finishing stuff for once. I think that was the main thing with me on the PS5 as well. It's I actually want to play a lot of these single player games just yeah. for that experience. Like there you go. That's a week and I've completed Ratchet and Clank, and that was. I didn't. I just wanted to complete it for the sake of completing it. But at the same time, it wasn't. I was driven at every waking moment to go play the game, which I wasn't. So I can nice, imagine when I do nice find trip. that title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so what you're yeah. saying is, Ratchet and Clank game of the year for you, yeah? <laughs> Ratchet and Clank <laughs> game of the week. <laughs> game of the week. <laughs> game of the week. Right. Game of this evening. It, like it's. I'm, I don't mean to take anything away from it. Like it's. It's completely subjective experiences, but. It just, it's not something that I'd actively, like I was saying to Stephen earlier on, if it didn't come with the console, I don't think I'd buy it yeah. until it was on like a, a really, really good sale. Um, mm -hmm. with, it, that, and that's just because the amount that's out there that I want to get through. Um, and it's just not the, the normal genre that I'm, I'm used to. But, uh, yeah. So if it's not, if Ratchet and Clank isn't up there for you, because I can come back to that in a bit, hmm. what are your contender what are some of yours or one of your contenders so far Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance <laughs> um, I went for him to say he's to... joking <laughs> I actually wanted to play that I was looking yeah. at it quite a does bit it, over doesn't that just highlight ago. how good the marketing campaign is though yeah like that's all all I heard was good things until review embargoes were lifted or the reviews yeah. that are coming to the coming to fruition but that's not on my list anymore. <laughs> no. Is that the one that had the, the WWE stars playing it together or something? Yes. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They had, um, what's it? Hannibal Buress. Was yeah. that that? Yeah. yeah. That was he was there. And the, yeah. the girl. Yeah, she was the WWE. Yeah. yeah oh, I thought yeah. that was like a... Um, no, it was the Dungeons like Dragons. A, oh, okay. Because they made that look really good. I was like, oh, this could be interesting. All I'll say is just... just <laughs> Go watch Skill Up's review. It is the funniest fucking review I've ever watched for a game. He literally says, "In the first half, I'm gonna show you gameplay, and explain and and talk about like what's good and bad about the game or what's bad about the game." He says, "In the second half, I'm gonna show you gameplay, and explain what the hell is happening." <laughs> Just go watch yeah, it. That's, it's a that's very dropped funny review. to the bottom of my list at the moment. Yeah. But it could be like, yeah. It's not going to be on par with Avengers for me because I think Avengers has that like the pull from the characters rather than like Dark mm. Alliance wouldn't really because I'm not into D and D as much as I would be the uh, um superhero route. But um yeah, I had um like like Stephen was saying, it's been a it's been a bad year for for games, but there hasn't really been a lot. Um, so mine is just completely subjective in terms of I played it this year. Um, and the top two I couldn't choose was Monster Hunter Rise and Phoenix Rising. They were my two. Phoenix Rising, not last year? Came, they, it came out last year. That's what I just <laughs> said, and you weren't <laughs> listening to me literally five seconds He needs seconds to get ago. something in there. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling you'd have to say Monster Hunter Rise. Yeah, yeah, like Monster Hunter Rise obviously came out this year, and it's solely for the Switch. And that, coming from not liking uh, Monster Hunter World, um, I didn't play Iceborne because I did, did, just didn't get into World at all. Um, as a solo player, it kind of I felt like it hindered you a lot um, in terms of I had people to play with, but you had to actually do the difficult part, which was hunt the monster by yourself at that high level before you can invite your friends, which made zero sense because, yeah. Um, yeah, I just I I loved everything about the Switch version. Um, I know it's a it's a new game, but I don't mean to say like it's an expansion or whatever. But um, yeah, I I loved it. Like it's it's a Monster Hunter game. Like the story obviously isn't the most appealing thing. It's more so the gameplay. And I I think I was more shocked at how well it performed on the Switch rather than anything. Like without there wasn't that much frame drops for what's going on and like i played that strictly on handheld i've never plugged in it mm -hmm. to the tv and um, docked or anything but yeah i just love that experience it it's just a typical monster hunter routine of eat food kill a monster 
craft new weapons, go kill another mo- another monster, go eat food, go kill another monster. And just it's just that constant like moving up in levels. Um, but yeah, I haven't played it in a couple of couple of weeks. Um, I dipped in the last update, I think it was. Can't remember the name of the monster. Um, but you're just climbing the ranks, so it gets harder and harder as you play through it. Um, isn't the new one out this week? Stories. That's Monster Hunter stories, stories yeah. yeah. I've seen, that's I've uh, that's like a turn based. Yeah. yeah. Um it's a completely different art style as well. I'm tempted to check it out. Though. It's a JRPG as well, which I didn't realise. Yeah. Oh, is it? JRPG, thought, yeah. Yeah. It's a turn based combat game. It's not yeah. uh, like it's not like Monster Hunter World Arise at all. It's what I got from it, it's combat. like it's like Pokemon in terms of like you're yeah. getting monsters to fight with those monsters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have heard exactly it carries right. over some things from um, from Rise, though. It carries over some of the good stuff from it. Oh, it's probably like the same kind of area, the, the, the village the that you're in. Yeah, um, and yeah. but just yeah, I just I just really enjoyed that. Like it's a it's a Monster Hunter game. If you've played one before, it's it's not a copy and paste, but it's a copy and paste with the added quality of life changes. The cut and and paste. Yeah, well, like just texture-wise and visuals, like it's it's very samey if you've played them before, and um, just in a new area. But yeah, that was probably my. See, I think I think it does edge a little bit away from Phoenix Rising, and um, Phoenix Rising was played on Switch as well, and I'm tempted to get it on PS5, just for the that's the visual quite awe. cheap actually for PS5. Yeah, but I, I saw like it on sale last quid. week as well. But it's just starting off all over again, and I have pumped. You don't have to. It has um, crosses. Does it? Between you had my curiosity. I'm fairly certain it has. Now you have my money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it has full assume. cross cross progression. Uh, you can save a game any platform. Continue playing on any platform that you own. Uh, to move your save between platforms, you need to upload your save to the cloud on the platform you've been on, and then obviously download it again. And, now, and yeah. now I'm tempted to also buy it for PS5. <laughs> so I'm getting it's Phoenix Rising on PS5 in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to, to, like that's just like I love that game. Like I did, I wasn't a big fan of Breath of the Wild. Um, I don't know if it was too difficult or it was the whole weapon breaking mechanics. Um, I didn't like the the dungeon, not the dungeons, the um, what were they called? The great divine beasts. Those guys, oh, yeah. where you're Rotten. rotating the fucking like, it's just I I didn't I didn't get the the appeal for it. Um, I was probably shit, and that's probably why because I looked at tutorials half the time. I remember half of that game I actually spent in the fucking fire region, and I kept dying oh, yeah. because I didn't have protective shit. But I didn't know you had to get protective shit because I went like a. A roundabout way rather than going through the the city that you have to go through so i just want linear <laughs> open world of me don't go if it's not very linear um whereas phoenix rising was um it's the open world but it's linear story it tells you very very in your face where to go um it, it felt like a breath of the wild light to me but without the light it was what i was looking for out of breath of the wild and um, i think that's why i got into it so much um, and the art style is great. The the mythological mm. side of it is fantastic. The stories start to tell, and the, Stephen can attest to this. The humor is either for you or not for you. Mm. But when did that come out? That was November, I think. Oh, so it yeah. squeezes in for yeah. Okay, he, he squeezes <clears throat> it in for um because that's yeah, the, like, that's the cycle. Because Cyberpunk didn't get in for Game of the Year. Not not oh, that oh, it would have considering how yeah. it landed. But that wouldn't have been involved in Game of the Year stuff for last year because it was just it for was the a December launch, so it would be available this year coming. But mm. let's be real, it's it's not going to be considering all the nonsense yeah. that went on. That went with it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's like just I I I loved it. I know it's it's a Ubisoft game. It has all that microtransactions but alongside it's, it but, but it's not a can, ubisoft game yeah see, that's the thing you can earn a yeah. shit ton in the game yeah. like a uh, transmog is a thing off launch as well which like it's fantastic yeah. um the you amount mean it didn't of take seven in, years to predict it in? yeah and you don't have to pay anything extra for it um but yeah it's just all the um 
all the in-game kind of quality of life stuff is fantastic to mm. kind of it doesn't hinder your experience it basically it 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 makes you want to play it more it makes you want to like it's it's zone clearing like any other kind of open world map like that you progress through the story you unlock the next zone which mm. is another god and stuff like that um and normally i would just rush from storyline to storyline to storyline but this made me want to play side quests and maybe want to collect 10 of these fragments to upgrade my next um damage output or health type thing but the expansions as well there's like four out right now i'm only halfway through the first one and that's the one complaint i do have about it actually is the the first expansion is a bit too similar to the initial game in terms of it's the same rotation with the gods that you've just um brought back and freed and mm. brought to olympus i know it takes place in olympus but it is very samey it's, mm. it's like the Stephen the do you know the missions the dungeons that you do for each god yeah yeah it's like that but kind of harpened up in difficulty like it's very very more mechanic heavy which which is great but it is very samey um, so I'm looking forward yeah. to playing the other ones because they're completely different mi- uh, mythology. Yeah. Like one of them is the the Chinese mythology. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Um, that was the yeah. most it's such one. a good game on PS5 as well. Like I got the, I bought it just at Christmas there because they had the PS4 version for sale. So I bought that and you got the PS5 upgrade for free. Mm. And um, it's so beautiful. Like that's bump to 60 FPS plus how good it looks. Ah, oh, it's see that's so, that's the I, thing like. I, it's just as soon as you said that you can cross save. I'm, I'm just, I'm hundred percent. I want to get it for PS5 I, now. Why it shocks me that more haven't done that. Yeah. You should, you're literally yeah. able to double dip on your audience. Yeah, yeah. Or like, triple dip, or quadruple like, dip, or whatever you want to dip. Because we not... really, you, you bought it on Epic, and I was very close to buying it on the Epic Store because of cross save. And I haven't and even I like, played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I actually well, probably won't get it for PS5 because I can just run the HDMI around now. Yeah. Not and like, I, it... I don't, I don't look for, like, I think I'm a, I'm a very casual person when it comes to quality in terms of frames and kind of dips in terms of, um, what's, what am I trying to say? Performance issues. That's what I was trying to, I couldn't yeah. think of the words. Mm-hmm. Performance issues because, like, I'm playing Outer Worlds right now, which I know I would have a 100% increase on experience on console or PC. But it's just being able to play a handheld, playing it on the couch. It's just, it's great. You, you're you're doing the exact same thing that you could be doing, but I know you're gonna get the better textures and graphics and stuff like that. But I think I'm very forgiven when it comes to those things. So I think with Breath of well, not Breath of the Wild, sorry, with um phoenix rising i'm actually excited to play it on ps5 now because it's not like i'll be taking that dip it's just it's gonna get better oh you're yeah. playing on switch aren't you yeah i'm so. playing on switch yeah and I, I like that that's Wait. handheld as well mm-hmm. so i'm gonna be it's like coming over to pc for the first time my eyes are just gonna go super I wide can see clearly now my yeah. frames are gone but just being able to play the main chunk on console or playstation and just pick up that portability on switch with the same save that's that's yeah. amazing it's great that's, i know the witcher yeah. the witcher does it from pc to switch which is so ridiculous when you consider it so yeah. i've got the witcher on pc and ps5 yeah no that doesn't You're fucked. and that's yeah or ps4 sorry yeah that doesn't do it i'm t- that Stupid. that didn't get any well i might get upgrades tomorrow we might yeah and when it is the update is they they are doing a, a next gen upgrade they're using um people off nexus mods to do it they're just taking them to do it the mods basically um okay. but that's a free upgrade and i assume they'll announce the release date tomorrow at WitcherCon. because i've i've played the first part of the story so many times that i don't want to have to do it again yeah. because it's on sale on switch for ages and i'm tempted to get it but I just don't want to start it. I've started on PC, I've started on console, I don't have to start it again. And I think it was just the performance on PlayStation 4 that really... Well, if you have it on PC, I can can send you a link. 
to a See, nice 9.6 yeah. gigabyte download to improve the textures. <laughs> oh. I think it, it's it's that kind of game that I, I do want to separate my PC from playing yeah. like my PvP games, mm -hmm. like to playing my story driven games on PlayStation. Mainly because my PlayStation can handle it now. Like I was trying to play them over yeah. the last couple of couple of months on PS4 and it is very hard, especially with the older games. Yeah. Like some of the newer games, like Fallen Order and stuff like that, and t even Titanfall, they were fine, but it's it's when you really start going back in the years like playing The Witcher, it it's just it's Mm -hmm. For one, it's hard to look past the textures, and I'm very forgiving when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, just like I've always wanted to play Skyrim, but I know I can't until the next one comes out because I can't go back that far back. It's just, it's not, it's not, it's ingrained in me that um, that that's, that's bad. probably <laughs> gonna get a PS5 version later this year. And if it does, I will more than happily Fucking jump. Todd Howard and shiny jacket gonna stroll out and announce that. It's like even Outer Worlds just when first. that first came to Switch. I wanted to get it, but just watching those side by side comparisons, it was looking like a 2013 game on the Switch. Mm -hmm. But it takes that. It took about a year, I think it was, to fi to find that kind of perfect update. And I, obviously, it's still hindered because it's on Switch. But it's um, it's smooth. Like you're not you're not struggling. It's not trying to catch up. Whereas PlayStation Four was was a struggle. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing The Witcher actually. It's a hard game, I think, tomorrow. at this stage to um, to play through because, well, like The Witcher is one of the games of the generation, mm. but it is very. I don't want to say last in it in it's the way in in its design of how you play through it. It is very last gen, mm. whereas things have become a bit more refined now. More fluid. The Witcher is very just. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's massive. And like even like because I I like the franchise, I want to play it, mm -hmm. but it, it is very hard to kind of get that drive when you are seeing all these yeah. like things that really do bug you, bug you from each playthrough, and you're kind of like, right, I'll just I'll try like like you trying to finish The Last of Us. It's like right, I'll just yeah, I'll sit down, exactly. I'll do it. It's, it's the drive I don't to want start. To have it. To. I think yeah. if you started it and got five or six hours in. You'd be like, right, I'm in now, let's go. But it's yeah. the whole, oh, do I have to start this? <laughs> this exactly. Can, I, I'm just going to exactly. go play this instead because it's easier. And like, yeah. We'll cover that next week. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think the, my, my top two have been Phoenix Rising and Monster Hunter. I think they're, they're the two I kind of, I played the most of this year. Like without like the likes of WoW and Destiny and um, Apex. I, I don't think they're kind of game of the year contentions in terms of I enjoy my time with them, but they're not like groundbreaking. It's just I that's how I enjoy spending my time rather than I got this experience from Phoenix Rising. And I think with Phoenix Rising, my uh, sights were set not so low, but I didn't I didn't yeah. expect a lot from it. I just expected to enjoy it and then put it down. Whereas it, I, th I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. I was I wasn't gonna pick it up only for the fact that I got the PS5 for one and the reviews like people are saying it's not the typical Ubisoft game. It's like no. okay because I I hate that open world sh like I couldn't play The Witcher Three. It was too big, too much. Too yeah. it's too much. You're just like I can't enjoy this. There's so much going on, um, and I love the old Assassin's Creed games, but like Kev, I dropped out after four. Like after it Black Flag, fast. I was like it's it's too big. It's too mm. much going on. But Jesus, Immortals Phoenix Rising really like took me by surprise. I need to go back and finish that now. But it's so like I didn't realize we're going back to that time of the year. I probably feels would've... like ages ago. Yeah. I would have brought that up a lot closer to Returnal in terms of in but, enjoyment. Like but in it's... fairness, Stephen, like Returnal is probably in contention for being yeah. a game of the year. And no, it, oh, yeah. it's, it has to be. It's very yeah. new. It's very fresh yeah, for yeah. you guys. Whereas yes. I haven't played Apart from Monster Hunter Rise, um, I I don't think I've actually played a new title this year. That's so what I, some, I, I, the, that's what when I was thinking about the only two new titles I've played. Well, no, I have played others, but they were shit. The only two new good titles that I've played this year are Ratchet and Clank and Returnal. Like yeah. I was actually looking at my Steam library. Like I played that um, Necromunda game, didn't enjoy it, so I deleted it off my system. 
Um, but apart from that, it has been fairly the quiet. Yeah, slim pickings, which is to be expected. But yeah. at the same time, it's yeah. It's, like when you think of it, it's yeah. nearly it's seven months into the year, yeah. and there's no kind of st- well apart from Returnal. Which when did that come out? Actually, that was only Returnal, February, April, March. Returnal, thirtieth of April. Okay. Jeez, it was yeah, fucking hell. Yeah, because I didn't I didn't play um, Outriders. I had no interest in playing it. Yeah. Um, and I'm a little bitch, so I didn't touch uh, Resident Evil, and that's probably. Maybe in contention as well because I saw it has like six million people have played it now or something. It's quite successful. Four and a half million. Four sales, and a half. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little bit less than six. Um, but yeah. But like, it's... I t- yeah. Go on, no, go on, Dil. Go on. No, I was just saying. I just I I think it's. I just took the subjective route and. Mm-hmm. I, I could have even said Avengers because I enjoyed my time with that so much, and yeah. it's it's not so much that. It's everyone go play this game. It's 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 your your process through the story, and it's 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 what you take from it. And one thing you might like, someone else might hate, but that's just how I am, um, how I approach it. Yeah. So I think like for me, Returnal. That's like I saw a lot of the conversation around. Uh, oh, it looks good, but oh, I'm not spending my seventy quid on it. I'm like. Shh fuck up with that nonsense like it's the most ridiculous thing ever. oh it looks good but no uh, with the with the way it's been received i'm I, i'm not it's not worth that much it's like it is shut the fuck up but um like it's one of those games that i wouldn't say look rush out and buy it because it's not for everybody mm. it's definitely not for everybody because it is it does take a certain amount of commitment to get not get mm-hmm. better but to get through it Muscle memory, I'd say, yeah. it, 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 with fights and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it's getting into that universe of like, I'm dying to play Demon Souls because like I've watched videos on, mm-hmm. um, I've watched a couple of reviews and just watching the gameplay, it's like I could actually get into it. Um, watching the fights and stuff like that. So I know when I get to that level, it's not just gonna be like that throwaway run and gun. I'm gonna have to actually really sit down and mm-hmm. just take 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 it that much more serious whereas i think people haven't or people who aren't into these kind of games don't necessarily do like it's just they don't want to bridge that gap yeah like that's the thing with those kind of skill-based games is there's a gap Mm. and the games tell you you either cross it or get fucked yeah and returnal has that but i think it's less punishing than Dark Souls. I think Dark Souls can re like in that Soulsborne series, that skill gap is so vast. I don't, I don't, like, don't, I don't actually think there's any comparison. No, they're two completely different games. Yeah. But in terms of like I think that's the, the closest comparison people make is like Returnal is as hard as Dark Souls. They're just put it into the same basket, yeah. But like but they're two different games, and for me, Returnal isn't hard. It's not a hard game. And like what Kev was saying, and um, when you see the pros, the the esports people playing it and you're like ah oh, you know they they're trying to get crits and stuff my i'm a running gun guy like if you see me in the crucible i'm just running constantly mm. and getting killed because that's just the way i do i just run into shit and because of that i have good reflexes that if i see something coming i can react quickly and because i've got the souls born skills i understand iframes so i know i'm gonna time myself to dodge through this because i know i'm gonna get through it quickly whereas other people who aren't accustomed to that will try to dodge away from it but it's still coming and then they can't dodge again and then they freak out so like th- there's i think in returnal that skill gap is more of an, a knowledge gap just understanding the mechanics of yeah. the game whereas in dark souls like you can understand the mechanics but you're gonna get fucked to some bullshit something's gonna get you um i think the and, thing with returnal yeah. is the gun the fights especially the boss fights and I wouldn't even say just the boss fights, the mini boss fights as well. So you can kind of split the enemies into three parts. You've got the fodder, which are very easy to take out. There's like quite a few of them, but you just take them out one by one, they're fine. Then you've got the bosses, which are kind of middling difficulty, but it's a pattern over and over. Then you've got the, the middle ones, those mini bosses that have a lot of health. They have a lot of attacks and they move very quickly. And they're probably mm. the hardest enemies in the game, but you generally, but you generally fight them 
in wide open spaces. Actually, they're not the most difficult, though. The fucking sentience are. But you fight them in open spaces where you can generally retreat to one side of the fight arena, position yeah. yourself behind a column where you kind of peek out, shoot a bit, get behind. Peek out, shoot a bit, get behind. And then the bullet storm stuff that's coming at you is getting blocked by the wall. And it's only when they get close to you to melee attack you that you just run to the other side of the arena and start again. And maybe that's me just cheesing those fights a little bit. But it it's it works. It works. <laughs> and that's how I've taken on those. Like when I was watching the review of it, it was Oh, these enemies are really hard because they've got these bullet storm attacks, but they're really quick moving and their melees do big damage. And they do. But I just found I'm always able I'm always fighting them in big open areas. So just put distance between me and them. Because the bullet storm shit is easy to dodge. Because that's what you spend the whole game doing. But it's the melee stuff that is a little bit trickier because they do kind of like premeditate that they're gonna do it but they still do them so quickly that it's it's iframes it's yeah but if you don't let them do that attack it's quite easy to fight them they're actually i've found them. it's just about putting enough bullets in yeah just the bullet storm is that the like i've only seen the fourth boss fight that you guys showed me last all week. the colorful the, <laughs> just the bombardment yeah. of yeah. different yeah. angles and yeah. shit like that okay mm -hmm. yeah so and like yeah. the thing it, it's very I wouldn't say it's very easy to dodge, but it's very easy to recognize the pattern of how you should dodge them. Yeah. Um, like red things are slow moving and don't really track you. Blue things track aggressively, but aren't too bad. Purple things, you just, you have to dodge them because yeah, you can't. You can't dodge through them either. Through you them. have to dodge over them or um, behind them. And then there's like orange things are aggressive tracking, but can be dodged through. And you kind of, you, you come across enemies that teach you those things and then the bosses yeah. kind of reinforce it. It's like Bungie's design philosophy in the raid. It's you learn it as you go and then it's reinforced when you come against the boss. But it's not, it there really is quite isn't a, a bit of Bungie game. in there. There is quite a bit of Bungie in there. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Look, we're gushing about it again. We need to stop. Yeah. Deal's getting annoyed with us. Do it. I'm not. Jesus. <laughs> no, no, it's like, like, it's. I'm just, it's unfortunate that I haven't played it. That's, yeah. that's all. Like, for me, um, it is a special game. Like, it really is a special game. It's not the only game that I played this year that I've thought is fantastic, but it is. It's. I'd need to sit down and write it out, what I love about it. So I'm not just kind of foaming at the mouth. But, uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> And I haven't finished. I'm, I'm looking forward to finish it. And like, I've, I'm gonna go. The platinum in it is a bit of an awkward one to get because it's based on RNG for some things. But I'm enjoying just being in that world so much that I'm happy to go get it. At least it's not something like completed no hit run or no <laughs> yeah. deaths run or something like. No, nah, it's it. nothing like that. <laughs> the only parts I take a while um, are collect all the collectibles in each of the biomes, and the collectibles mm -hmm. are procedurally generated. So. It won't always spawn that the right rooms for you, so you just have to get or even that run, or even that run. So it's play through the biome, yeah. restart the cycle. Play through the biome, restart the cycle. Yeah. Um, Stephen, do I'm you really... have before we get too deep on the returnal again? We have to pull ourselves out here. Have you anything else that is maybe a contender for game of the year that you have played? Now that you have those extra couple of months because I broke the fucking fourth wall. No, you don't. And gave you. Not letting you. <laughs> letting you. Uh, no. Um, I mean, Demon Souls is the only other thing that really tickled my fancy. Um, obviously, uh, remake Integrate did, but that's an expansion, it's so an expansion, not yeah. really. But like that was the other game that I really enjoyed. Um, but this year, like there has, like I actually. I know I haven't completed and I haven't gotten anywhere near deep into it, but I did enjoy Monster Hunter Rise. Um, nice. I just, the Switch for me holds it back. I really wish it released on PC at the same time. Um, but it is nice having it on handheld. Like, it performs mm -hmm. really well. It's a solid 30. Um, and it. That's because Capcom nice. know how to make computer games. But yeah, it's not like true. the amount of stuff going on at once. Mm. Like it's not 
It's not yeah. a, a kind of wait for the room to load and then it's it's done. It's it's Ooh. what's there. It's literally like and there's no cutscenes like in between. No. Yeah. Um. There's yeah. two. There's two public zones in your base and like transitioning from one to the other. Like it's it's. It, I don't want to say seamless because it's handheld with 30 FPS and it is it it does dip at times. But like there's instances where two monsters are fighting and you have other monsters going on in the background and then you have four people connected via online yeah. in that instance and it, it performs so well like that's that's the big thing about it it's because and you can choose can to play it games. offline if you are getting issues and stuff like that but yeah. it's I, t I thought it was fantastic i was expecting it to tank and i think that's why i enjoyed it more if game but, freak like, made um... it would run a five fps <laughs> stop um, I think the that's the other thing about Returnal, by the way. It has no loading anywhere. It doesn't load. It's insane. That was a Ratchet yeah. Clank as yeah, well. Same I was Ratchet Clank. No Stephen actually streams. made a great point when I was um, doing up the graphic for the episode. Um, he was like, what you should do is take the Returnal portal and put a Ratchet and Clank area inside the portal. <laughs> I was like, that's brilliant, but I'm not going to do it because I'm lazy and don't have the expertise. Um... The only other games that I would have had up there, um, someone that I haven't played, but I know I would really enjoy is near Replicants. Um, so I'm really waiting for that to go Human on anime. sale. <laughs> I think that could possibly um, be a contender. For me, that's definitely something I think could be a contender. Um, and the only other one that I played and enjoyed, but then pissed me off at the end was the Odd Worlds. Oh, um, oh yeah, soul, soul something. Soul, soul sword. Yeah, they have the I enjoyed that. For that Smith. Yeah, that only came out there last week. Weird. It got a digital release and then a physical release two months later. Serious. But... Weird. Yeah. That was like Hades. Hades done that as well. Mm. I have that actually. I bought that in the Epic Store. I have to try that. He might like it now but, after um, Eternal because it's yeah similar. I've heard well, good things. Jeez, Kev, you're going at your ear. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> it's really on but that's, these on. Yeah. but that's it really the only other one that I would yeah as I said the only one I think might become a game of the year contender for me would be near replicants when you play it um, when I play it what about you Dil have you any other potentials or something you haven't played yet that could interest you I'm really in, I, I, I just because of the the PS5 has opened up so many new windows for me. Uh, I'm dying to play Miles Morales. Um, that's another. I'll give you another uh, if you want. Say I want to grow I my collection. To, like, <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm, I'm waiting for them. But I'm the type. I of think person in that it's club. probably. I think it's safe to buy that one because you know you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Whereas, Whereas like, Eternal, if I'm like, trying something, yeah, hundred percent. But um, yeah, the Miles Morales and Demon Souls. I'm really looking forward to playing. Um. I'm I'm excited to play the rest of the the Avengers shit when it eventually my account gets ported across if that's possible. If not, I'll be starting the campaign again, which would be a big GG's. Hey. Um But other than that for this year, there's no. It's just my my backlog for PS5 is is grown, so I'm just excited to play those. Uh, like even Assassin's Creed, I haven't been interested in them. Like I think I fell off before Black Flag even. Um, Brotherhood, I think, was the last one I played. Um, but just kind of re-sparked my single player um, wanting to play these games again. Mm, same. Mm. So I'll come back with my game of the year when I play all of them. In, but there is a, there in is... December, because we'll still be doing that this then. Yeah. But like, there is a lot that I could. And, and like that, it's it could be the the most generic game, but if, if I have really good experience playing it, like mm. Avengers... Like everyone hated that. Um I know I keep talking about it, but I just I really did enjoy it. Um but then again that could just come into like my like for superheroes and that kind of thing. Whereas if someone else goes in like with D D, no no previous knowledge of franchise or stuff like that, it's like yeah, that's a bad experience gaming wise rather than franchise wise. Mm. But yeah, I think Miles Morales and Demon Souls would be Another two that I could possibly say. Yeah, I got Miles Morales there. Try it out. Well, my, my other 
other contender for my game of the year. Well, it's it's Ratchet and Clank. Um, I know it is aimed at a younger audience. Generally, it, it, like the story is cheesy, but like just playing that game and what that game is able to do in terms of the way the portals work you go from one planet to another and yeah. there's no loading like the first time you pull yourself through one of those portals just like holy shit that That's just cool. happened yeah. there's no no frame drops no nothing and like there's parts where you're literally going from one through a portal from one planet to another and it's so seamless it's incredible or when you're on I can't remember the names of planets now because it's been a couple of weeks but when you hit the crystal to bring it from oh yeah that mission back to yeah. reality like that's incredible it's basically that titanfall mission it's like the titanfall we, mission it, yeah, it's yeah. basically that and it's just like holy shit they act that's incredible the way that works and it's seamless and like the gunplay is fantastic it's a ratchet and clank game so it's a funny story or it's generic it's cheesy and that's whatever but it's also that PS exclusive quality in terms of its visuals and its design. It's it's fantastic. So I think that's probably a contender for me for my game of the year. Um, now that it, it was still still early enough in the year, by the end of the year I probably would say ah it's probably fourth or fifth. But I love my time with it. I wouldn't say it's one of the best games I've ever played, but it's. Until I played Returnal, it was the best next gen game I'd played, and then Returnal I played that, and I was like, "Nah, this is mm. this does all this shows off the power of next gen," and I'm so excited to see a what next gen titles we're getting over the next couple of years, and b whatever the hell House Mark do next. It's and like, that's the thing. I hope it's like... in the AAA space because a lot of their stuff is that was that top down bullet hail stuff. Whereas this is Eternal is a triple A title, so I'm really excited to see what they do next in the triple A stuff in the triple A um, category. Sorry, Dil, go on. No, I was just gonna chime in and say like that's the thing. Like you were saying, with what to expect over the next few years. Like this is only the start yeah. of next gen, and mm. if what we got, like I was saying, I wouldn't because I'm not a big fan of the franchise, I've never played it before, Ratchet and Clank, I wouldn't go out and spend 70 quid on it. No. But I would go out and spend 70 quid just to get that next generation. Like, it's it's very hard to, to explain it, but just the feeling of it, and just visually, it's it's incredible. And just the transitions are non-existent. Like, it's yeah. just... It's, it's, and it's so the same in, It's the same so in Eternal. It's incredible. Yeah. And, like, so if, if you look that, at Ratchet and Clank is a cartoon game, so yeah. you obviously think, ah, oh, it doesn't take as much power for them to do that sort of stuff. Returnal is a real to life looking game, kind of same, and it yeah. does the same things that Ratchet and Clank does. And it's like this is that's it's such a well made game. I think that's what it's gonna be over the next couple of uh, I don't want to say months because nothing's coming out now, but a couple of years we're gonna see that it's like this is the best thing that next gen has ever offered, and then we play another title, and it's like oh my god, they utilized a new aspect of it and then it's like it's just gonna constantly grow and grow because they will see how much more power they have yeah. like their yeah. their output can be tenfold compared to yeah. what it was that's what if you think about like the best generally the most impressive games come out in that last year or so of a console mm. cycle the ones mm. that people really gush about it like the last the two last of us came out right towards the end of yeah steven the console cycle <laughs> oh whether you like them or not what they they do a lot of impressive things yes yeah. and for them to be doing such high quality nonsense at the start of the console generation it's only it gets so it's like if you look at what's coming out, like demon souls is incredible in comparison to older from soft stuff or mm. the original or the original like Ratchet and Clank's incredible looking some of the Final Fantasy as well Final Fantasy looks the end insane of, yeah. Like, what's it? Returnal is incredible, so it's exciting to see what they do down the line. It really, really is. Mm. And at, closer to the home, I'm really excited to see how Bungie can use the new tech available to them. Because you you imagine what Bungie can do with haptic feedback on the PS5? They can make mm. those guns feel incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's, that's what people want, isn't it? It's like mm. the feel of a gun rather yeah. than just cycle and through Returnal does that so well oh it uses some of that stuff so well 
I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to talk about Ratchet and Clank more. I just don't know what really more I can say that I didn't say in previous weeks. I just, like, I feel like I'm not doing it as much justice as it, as it deserves here. But, like, it, 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 it is. It's a, For me, it's one of my Game of the Year contenders. Whether it's there in the official ones towards the end of the year, I'm not yeah. sure. It might be there by default of just not a whole lot coming out over the next few months. There's a few. Um, but I think a lot of those big hitters might get pushed to the start of next year. Which if you guys have no other contenders you want to bring up that we've played, we could quickly discuss some of the potential ones that we didn't play yeah. and would like to play or just won't play because whatever reasons. Um, if you've said nothing else. No, I think that's all. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I... Sorry, then. No, it's just I was just saying like like that. I haven't played a lot of mm. new single player titles. It's more so just the live service games. Yeah. So, yeah. I I think we we could look at this in two separate ways, and that we could look at stuff that's already out that we haven't played, and then we can maybe look at a few of the future releases that are coming out over the next few months that could potentially be interesting. Like I think the three, there's three or four that kind of jump out at me as very that that were reviewed well or landed well that would interest me and like the likes of hitman i'd like to maybe play though i haven't oh played. yeah like hitman 3 came out and that was received very well because yeah. the whole trilogy of that is fantastic i just i've played a lot of the older hitman games but when they had this kind of episodic drop i kind of went uh eh, i'll play it when all of it is out <laughs> and then just never got around yeah. to it I own Pitman 1 and 2, the reboots. I just haven't finished them. Um, obviously, Monster Hunter Rise was received very well. You guys have spoken about it. I have no interest mm -hmm. in playing it, but I can un I can respect why it's as highly rated as it is. Um, I think Outriders landed to kind of mixed reviews. The people who loved it really loved it, but the people who were kind of Eh, we're kind of like, oh, eh. Mm. Um, Resident Evil Village, I think, landed quite well too. I think there was some people were like, oh, this is incredible, I love this. And then there was others that were kind of like, eh, it's okay. I like what they've done, but it's not for me. But, and yeah, so that could potentially be up there for a lot of people. Um, there was something else that's gone out of my brain right now, but it'll come back to me. Oh, do you know what actually might, what might actually take it this year, and I didn't realize was out. Um, Persona Five Strikers. Persona games always get really well received yeah. and always are like highly commended. So that could fucking just shadow come in there and because they they have such huge followings. Never gotten into them, but no, me neither. Never played them. I think there's one always, of those, I think Persona them. isn't Persona Five free on the PS Plus collection. Oh, that, I think it, I think might, I have I think it is actually Kev, it. because yeah. as soon as you said the name, it did resonate because I just I was looking at PS Now mm. and PS Plus today. Um, I think Neo and Persona were both there. I Same with Neo. Like, Neo's supposed to be fantastic. I just never, never. It's dabbled a kind in. of Dark Soulsy. It's a it's a Soulsborne inspired title. Yeah. Did they did Team Ninja do Neo? Yeah. Yeah. But that won't be Game of the Year contender. Chaos. No. I'm here for hmm. chaos. Um, yeah, I, I was looking at it. There's not a whole lot else, I don't think. That, there's a few times. Like, like, it's the same as Silent Hill. Listening to Stephen talk about Silent Hill. And then, I know, I'm not saying it's Game of the Year contender. I'm not being an idiot, don't worry. But, like, in terms, like, I've listened to you speak about Silent Hill. And then I've followed all, a lot of stuff about Silent Hill and hear people speaking about it. And I'm really interested in it, but I know I couldn't bring myself to play it because I just, I, I wouldn't sleep. And it's the same with Resident Evil. I'm really interested in it as a, as a franchise. The games, by the way, not those, um, not those that movies that no one wants to speak about. But, like, as a franchise, I'm really interested in it, but I couldn't play it. You'll watch me play it though, no problem. I'll watch you play it. See, I'll watch you play it, no problem. There's even parts of Returnal where 
I'm sitting there like it's it's mainly when you're going through the house sequences. I'm kind of like something's gonna fucking jump out at me now, and it's two o'clock in the morning, and then every mm. noise in the house gets amplified, and the next door neighbor flushed the toilet, and I shut my. But yeah, it's just <laughs> I'm just I I don't enjoy that sort of stuff. But yeah. um, but I think like Resident Evil games are generally very well received and review very very well. Well, seven and eight were. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Like the older ones are, are loved and then there's a bit of a lull and then the newer ones are received well again. Yeah. And the remake um, the remake of Resident Evil Two was nominated for Game of the Year last year, two years ago. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah. Mm. Um Yeah, that, that was, like I don't think there's much this year. No. So Shall we far. look at future uh, releases? That's why I, I have my so. list here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dill's list. Where's that? That's a great list. <laughs> the next um, big one I think coming out in terms of next gen is Kenna. Yes. Bridge of Spirits. Yes. I'm really I think that's that. really going to utilize it so yeah. well. That's one that I'm looking at as a potential could be my game of the year depending on how it is and what it's actually like. Because that game's looking fantastic and it's only 40 quid. I'm yeah. really looking forward to that. Yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of? And I know we haven't seen it. Just I have them in the same Rock, group. The it's that and Forspoken. Like I know yes. that's 2022, but to me, it's just I don't know if it's yes. like the the protagonist looks the same, <laughs> or just yeah, it looks like a, a real life iteration of that. But yeah, but yeah, that's kind of too. So to me, it looks like. Do you remember that game? Um, Odyssey. No, no, what was it? Um, what was the name of that game? Um, Odyssey Forbidden West or something. Uh, oh my God, what was it called? I'm mixing up with like Horizon and everything now. Yeah. Oh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West. That's the one. Never played that. Um, it... <sighs> It just reminds me of that kind of gameplay style where you're... For which now? For Kena or for Forspoken? Kena. Okay. The kind of, the art style and stuff kind of reminds me of a more childlike version of that yeah, game. Which is um, a game that I always wanted to play, mm. but it just didn't play well. So I'm really interested in seeing how it is played. Like, yeah. Because we really got footage last week game. and it went very under the radar. Like yeah. I, I I was either last week or the week before. I was I th- it was just on my homepage on YouTube. It was like forty minutes of gameplay and yeah. it looks amazing. And they're showing off characters as well on the Twitter page every so often. Yeah, they just, showed they off they released um, little snippets. Yeah. Because that's the, out quite um, soon. It's out in like five weeks, six weeks. August. August yeah, twenty fourth. Because no, even the wait. enemy race wait. look look fantastic as yeah. well. It looks like Dark Souls for children. Mm. <laughs> Cartoon yeah, Dark Souls. Maybe. Um, but it is, it's like that kind of that woodland lifestyle but dark yeah yeah i'm really interested for me it's playstation's answer to zelda that's what i kind of take from it that yeah it's it's their zelda inspired type franchise and hopefully if it if it's good that they'll they could expand on that down the line and release mm. sequels to it. Yeah, it just could be the but, start yeah. of the franchise. Yeah, or I'm, P- I am PS looking exclusive forward to it. Yeah. I am really looking forward to it. It is PS exclusive, isn't it? It's a P- No, it's PS exclusive, Epic. but it's on Epic Game Store. Okay. I'll get it on PlayStation. It's one of those games that yeah, you're not going to get it's... graphical improvements by playing it on PC. No, not You'll just get it on PlayStation and then Louise can play it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think apart from that, like yeah. the, the two that kind of stood out to me and Stephen disagrees on one of these I think like Horizon if it releases this side of Christmas will probably sneak in there for a cont- as a big contender for game I think year. it would if it did yeah. release if but it I, release, I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't think it will personally I really don't no. I think the when other one now? what's it? it doesn't have a date just it doesn't have a date it's 2021 okay. but I think the other one again if it comes out this side of Christmas I think there's so much hype and so much want for it to succeed is Halo Infinite. That, like, uh, people want that to do really well. Yeah. So, 
it, it may drop yeah, I, and be I don't know I don't see that taking a game of the year awards um, to me that I, feels I, like a November kind of Call of Duty Battlefield kind of slot like yeah. it's 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 probably going to be great but like Steven said it's, I don't think it's going to be I think be wrong. I think they've probably dropped the ball with the story which is going to knock it out of the yeah. game of the year i think the multiplayer will be fantastic oh, i yeah, think that's 100%. where they put it that's where they put their efforts into which is why it's free to play and it's going to yeah. be supported 100 so on. it'll probably I'd take play. best multiplayer game oh yeah that i can i can see that happening yeah. no problem yeah. um, i hope i hope the, the campaign is good though because that's the like i won't play halo for the multiplayer even though it's free to play even though it looks phenomenal phenomenal i couldn't care less about playing it for the multiplayer it's the campaign I'd be interested in that for. So I do hope they haven't dropped the ball on the campaign. <laughs> yeah. I definitely played a multiplayer. It's, it's usually a good crack. I've never um, played a Halo, just, so I don't really have what? that enticement. But yeah. I think, I, I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm a fucking old man. But I've just got to this point where I just couldn't care about multi uh, competitive stuff anymore. It just doesn't do it for yeah. me. I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, I just couldn't care less. <laughs> Like I think, the, yeah, the I'm thing happier with not doing it. It's like they're yeah. trying to appeal to that side of the audience, but at the same time, it's like as soon as the next kind of big multiplayer comes along, that whole audience just goes onto that. Yeah. Whereas it does, it doesn't have that kind of. You don't take away a lot compared to taking away a campaign or taking away a story. Like it doesn't kind of yeah. stick with you as long. Which it's yeah. great having that aspect to complement, but not mm. to solely focus on. It's something I've done over the last year or so is instead of doing what I used to do and like, oh, I'm finished, I don't know, all my stuff in Destiny's PvP, uh, PvE, I've done my raids, I've done all this. Oh, I'll just go back into Crucible now for the next couple of months and chill. I've stopped doing that over the last year, 18 months. Yeah. And I just find I'm much happier because of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just me. Like I'd, I'd rather play a, through a campaign of a game, whether that be something triple a or just something to throw away i'm much happier just sinking 20 hours into something and they're like yeah you know what i enjoyed that and now it's time for the new expansion yeah, yeah. it depends on your mood as well like yeah. there's, there's some days that i'd happily sit here and play apex for 10 hours and there's other days where i can't still make it for more than an hour yeah there's days where i want to play like, like today too. i think i saw you play four different games today <laughs> i jumped on wow today man the fucking the lag was insane like and that that's very very dependent on how well the servers are is yeah. how well your time is gonna ha gonna be because i had so much delay it was insane i was like i couldn't do it i was literally yeah. halfway through my first i was just doing my daily quests i was halfway through my first one out of three and it was just like the, the response time was so long i was dead i, I they weren't taking hits before I'd even like I was halfway through my rotation before they take their first hit. It was fucking. It was horrible. And then I was dead. So I was like, nah, can't do that. Um, uh, and then I just went to Apex. But like, I, that, saw, like, I, I think still, I saw you on Fortnite as well at one stage. I played it on console yeah. with Aiden. Yeah, I've been playing that on PS5. Um, but just like I, I'm in the mood to play multiplayer games. Like I do today. I was even playing Battle for Battlefield, Battlefield, Battlefront. Um, I enjoy jumping into that time to time more so for the Star Wars aspect of it. Um, but it is a really good multiplayer. It's it's different than your generic six v six. It's more like Battlefield, like your big open. Mm -hmm. um, mm. What's it called? Imperial or no Galactic War? Galactic War? I think it is. I can't Galactic remember. Galactic Conquest the game is it or something? It's it's basically the big know, fucking massive. Like you have like five teams of four on each side. Um, but like that, it's yeah, it's it's just, to me, it's all mood dependent. Um, mm -hmm. And like that, if if a game has that pull with the story to make you want to just get up and play it as much as you can. I'm just looking through the list. And yeah, same here. Only... Like Far Cry Six is out in October, and um, like it, no, it's not going to be a. It won't win any official game of the year stuff because it's a, just another Far Cry game, but. If done well, if it tells a really good narrative-driven story that's kind of streamlined as opposed to the way the recent ones have been, they've been great, but they've been very sprawly. 
So it'll be interesting mm. to see if that lands do, quite well. Do franchise games tend to go high on the no. the list? No. no. Yeah, not, not generally. Really. No, they wouldn't generally. That's what I was thinking. Um, unless it's the Naughty Dog franchise. But like Last of Us was only like I wouldn't even call that a franchise yet. Like, like that was a a standalone. Oh, oh yeah. The original was a standalone, but the second yeah. one is a franchise. Definitely. Like Guardians of the Galaxy is out. It's not going to take any official I'll game wait of the year. For that, man. But no, yeah, yeah that, that, that was about, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> for you, you might put it up there, and and that's absolutely fine. I'm personally excited for Just Dance 2022. Yes. Yeah, I can't wait for Guardians. If I did, if I played Just Dance in this house, I'd fall through the fucking floors because it's an old house. It's <laughs> it's eighty years old. Everything creaks. Diablo Four yeah. is that this year? No. I don't Okay, because yeah. it's the remaster in September, isn't it, or August? Yeah. September. No, I have no following, and mm. I can't. The yeah. only mm. other thing that I'm looking forward to, but it's not a new game, is the expansion to Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. That's going to be so good, and that comes out when November twenty third. You have November twenty third. What, is um, 14 the MMO or is 15 the MMO? 14 is the MMO, yeah. Okay. And yeah. it's it's going to be so good. The story that they've built up over the years. Oh, I'm, I'm, I've never been excited to play an expansion to a game. I've always been like, yeah, if it's there. But this it's the culmination. It's the only thing, yeah. And it's just how good the game plays. Like, I'm sure you feel the same way with WoW. It's like, once you mm -hmm. get into a role and you understand what to do and you've got good story to get through, there's nothing better. Like, when I was playing deep Shadowbringers... Into that character. Yeah, like, playing the Shadowbringers expansion was insane. Like, it's... It's just so good when you get good storytelling and you, like, in an MMO, you have combat that you don't have in any other game. Mm. Um... And just having the Final Fantasy elements, just, yeah. So, for me, that that's a potential game of the year, even though it's not going to be a game as such. But that could definitely be the game I enjoy the most this year now, when that comes out. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of sad looking at the list for the rest of the year, because I'm like, there's not, there's really not, a, lot. Lot. There's not no. a lot I'm looking forward no. to. But you know what? That means it's perfect time to get into that back catalogue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think and officially. I think, yeah. I think what you said, Stephen, is perfect example of like you enjoy the Final Fantasy universe, so you like the the MMO side of it. Whereas I enjoy the WoW universe, like I'm getting more into the lore and mm. stuff like that. So I like that kind of story mm. aspect of it. Whereas it's like mm. if I tell you to play WoW or you tell me to play Final Fantasy, it's like there's always that gonna be delay because it's like it's so overwhelming in terms of like what's yeah, going yeah. on that it's. It's like you you have your grasp on this. It's like you don't want to give that up because you've you've done so well to get this far and you understand what's going on. I think that that kind of mm. hit the nail on the head. Yeah. That. I think whatever does take game of the year, not our personal ones because that's whatever, but what does take the official ones will have done it kind of by default just because it has been such a... I wouldn't say a <laughs> lackey. the year. only contender. <laughs> yeah, like when Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio won his, won his Oscar. Thanks for that one, Stephen. Don't um, take my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever, whatever takes it will kind of take it by default because not that there has been anything yeah. good that's been out this year. There's just not been as much as a normal year. Yeah. But I feel sorry for games coming out next year because next year is fucking stacked. Bombarded. It's going to yeah. be stacked with games. Yeah. Starfields, fucking Horizon, God Starfield's of War. Starfield's not coming out next year. Let's be honest. It's, not, <laughs> it's it's just not. But yeah, God of War, Horizon, um, whatever Breath else. of the Wild 2. Kojima's new Xbox yeah. game. Yeah, there's Metal a lot. Gear anyway, Online. Yeah. Shall Metal Gear spoken. Online. Metal Gear Online X. Shall, <laughs> shall, we, shall we hit the news real quickly? Yeah, go for it. Go on. We've already chatted about um, Ubisoft and their thing with um, Assassin's Creed. So yeah. I'm gonna I'll put that in real quickly at the start because I have it here. So it, we already spoke about this. Uh, Jason Schreier, as it always is, came out with an article about what is coming next in 
from Ubisoft and with Assassin's Creed, and that's what it was. It's uh, live service nonsense that people didn't. But this ask isn't going to be for another two years, no, though, isn't yeah, it? Not while, because they announced know. that they're going to stick with um, Valhalla yeah. for the next year. Yeah, Valhalla is getting more support next year, so it'll be the year after. Whereas to me, the live service, it, this is what it's going to be. Like it's it's supporting a story rather than. Uh, I don't know. It's it could go any way. That, that's... It, it, it could go either way. That's the thing. Yeah. Really, really, really good. I'm just gonna paste that into the news. My news articles real quickly because I never did it. Um. Right. I'll go back to the start of them. Um. Close to home. August twenty fourth is the Destiny Witch Queen showcase. Yes. Um. Who knows what this is gonna be? Um. It could be a two minute thing, or it could be a twenty forty minute deep dive. Um, interestingly enough, that's the same day as the new season drops, so at least we'll have something to entertain us while the servers are shitting the bed. Didn't they do that with Beyond Light? I think they might have. I think we because we did with hear about this. But to tell it? us about Beyond Light, wasn't it? I can't remember. So Arrivals came out that day, and then we got the showcase. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I. That's yeah. what I meant. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, they're doing the exact same again then. Yeah, yeah, which which was great because yeah. you're kind of you're in that. What's it called? You kind of have that setting in your head. Yeah. 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 I think as well, it probably leans into the fact that whatever the new season is, it's going to spoil. Yeah. Whereas Arrival would have done that. Oh, that's true, Stephen. Yes, yes. That's probably a good shout, actually. That whatever next season is would spoil a lot of this stuff. This is why why it's launching alongside it. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I can't wait for that, though. This, this is going to be our longest one now, and this takes us into 22. I, I, I'll be playing yeah. Kana. Don't know about you. This is... Oh, yeah, same day. Oh, it's the same, same day. day. Oh, shit. Yeah. Open, opening Night Live is also that day for uh, Gamescom. Where that's Jeff Keighley's end of the Summer Game Fest. He has another showcase that night as well. So August 24th is fucking stacked. Stacked. Um, yeah. The most infamous news of the week that nobody was oh. hoping for was the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Such a um, missed opportunity. You know what? Talk about whiff. Like, if there hadn't been rumors for the last... And here's me playing devil's advocate, by the way. If... Not that they deserve it. If there had been no rumors about a Switch Pro for the last 6, 12 months. And no, oh, it's going to be announced in, And it's going to be this. It's going to be 4K. If this had just come out of the blue. To yeah. say... We're bringing out an OLED model. It's got a bigger screen. It's got an Ethernet cable and it's got a 64 gig of internal storage. People would have gone, you know what? I have a Switch. I don't, so I don't need this. That's fine. For people who don't have a Switch. Yeah, or that. But for people who don't have a Switch, they could have gone, oh, you know what? Now's my time. I'm going to jump in here and get one of these. Because of all of the rumors over the last forever about a Switch Pro that was going to be improved performance and improved everything, to then bring this out of nowhere, yeah. people were rightly going to be pissed off. I still do think that there is a powerful version of the Switch coming out with Breath of the Wild. I hope so. But may, I think I hope that's not just me being naive. But I hope so. I don't think, I think Switch can... I don't think they can survive another wave of big games like that. That See, are going to be think... so demanding yeah. on the system. That's like, yeah. it's perfect. Up, it's perfect time. Like, without the release of this, like November this year would have would have been the perfect time yeah. if it was not the year that we've just had. I, I think that probably has impacted it, deal. To be fair, yeah. yeah. Whereas this I feels like I... a very in between phase. Yeah. It's kind of like we need to just cater to people between now and then. Yeah, it's just weird, like. So such, people, such a weird people direction want to go it, and then they go here it is with a slightly better screen it's like but we don't need yeah. a better screen we need it to perform like and uh, by the way i'm not sitting here saying i want 4k games on my switch i don't need 4k games on my switch i want them to just be fucking to perform well yeah like if you play sword and shield i've played a lot of sword and shield by the way i've put like 400 hours into those games so I can't, i'm not really going to complain about them but they perform really badly and maybe in that the goes open, back... the, the oh, wild area, isn't it? It's, it's horrendous. Yeah. And they perform so bad. Now, Zelda Breath of the Wild performed quite well. And I imagine Breath of the Wild 2 was going to just reuse a lot of the assets. But 
it's Legends Arceus that I'm really concerned about. Because yeah, that was really Game dodgy, Freak. Even on the... Game Freak are not the best at optimizing their games, so I'm kind of concerned about that. But we'll see what happens down the line. That looked horrible. <laughs> it really looked so frame. That Pokeball with. Yeah. It's gonna be like playing Pokemon Go on an iPhone three. <laughs> but I just hope that's not gonna be a swing and a miss because I really hope that's the next big step for Pokemon games and not just ah oh, that didn't work out. So we're just gonna go back to the with tried and tested. Yeah, um, this would be a nice alongside game or in yeah. between. Like yeah. every second year we get a Legends game and and in the by year we get the the big franchise release. I hope that the big franchise release becomes the Legends games. And they just really commit to it. Yeah, but like, it, it kind of has to go down that route because, like, I know people probably said this hundreds and hundreds of Pokemon yeah. ago, but like, how many more can we get with new variations on designs yeah, that exactly. don't feel half arsed? Like half yeah. the ones in the Sword and Shield. Like, like people don't want to necessarily new Pokemon. They want a, like a really, really good, brave game. Yeah. But. I'll still, play the I'll still play the shit out of it if they don't do yeah. it. And that's the problem. It's that's the whole the the formula it's the catch. works. Yeah, it's the catch-22. Right, moving on. Elden Ring. I didn't read through all of this because um, it was fairly long, but um, Miyazaki broke down a lot of stuff about the game. There's actually quite a lot of interesting stuff in here. So it split into six parts. The name of the world was given away. I can't remember it off the top of my head. The Lands Between is what it's called yeah i saw another thing where george r martin didn't have a massive massive input on the story I no, he just he wrote the lore he, he just wrote developed the lore. yeah he developed the lore and then they built the story around the lore i thought he would have yeah. been the no. the co-writer to no, that it would have never got finished then though <laughs> yeah true yeah. um but yeah it's, it's like any rpg there's a mainline route through the game but you can play go off the beaten track we've all heard this yeah. hundred times but yeah, if you the six main areas, blah blah blah. If you're interested in that, you can go read it. I met saw Sekiro mentioned there. Where was that? There. Oh, it's just about stamina meter. That's fine. Um, this was announced today. Um, not that anyone really cares all that much. CD Projekt Red have acquired a uh, uh, development studio. Acquired Vancouver. Vancouver. <laughs> they just they just bought all of Vancouver. Coming for you Canadians. Wouldn't Vancouver be a really good setting for a game? Or was that where Watch Dogs was? Not Chicago. Anyway, um, they I I, don't, I can't remember the name of the. They acquired a, a studio in um Vancouver. I can't think of the name of it, okay. but they're basically CD Project, uh, Vancouver. Um, so you might see the DLC in the next two years. <laughs> yeah, fucking. You might see the fucking next gen upgrade in the next two years. Um, and then the last bit of news, it's kicking off in just under an hour, about 50 minutes away, yeah. is there's a PlayStation oh, yeah. State of Play at 10 p.m. Ireland's UK time. By the time this comes out, it will have happened last night. Um, I'll put the link to that in the description below rather than this article because you can go find it there. Um, it's Basically, it's focused around Deathloop. The first yeah. ever Xbox Game Studios game to launch mm. on PlayStation exclusive, um, and that's at 10 p.m. There's also some. And stuff they about specifically Indies said in the and third party. So in the and third party, no, yeah, no big announcements. I mean, third party, there might be a couple of things there. I think that's just going to complement on what was announced at Summer Games Fest. Yeah, you know, there won't be a whole lot. No. So, no. um, curb your enthusiasm, basically. So yeah, you that's like the Deathloop, news. Go watch it. <laughs> I think Deathloop actually does have some potential to be a lot of people's game of the year because they are trying to do some really cool things in that, and that's one that we didn't mention ourselves. But I'm not that Doesn't interested. Interest me. I'm not that interested um, in it, but so. it does look cool. Um, but as always, those links will be down there below. Go click them if you want to read them. But yeah, that's that. Yeah. One thing I really, really like. Um. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. One thing um, I'm kind of not upset with, but I want to continue my cyberpunk journey just because I've been looking at this for the last hour in the screen. Um, <laughs> and if that if that had a cross and on yours, if that had a cross that... um, cross progression, <laughs> yeah. because like like I was I'm saying, I'm surprised Kev, it doesn't. 
like last week. I'm like 60%, 70% through the story on PC. And I want to play it on PlayStation because of that chilled atmosphere, but I just, I can't, I don't want to start it again. Yeah. You know? I've, I've done the same. Like, obviously, I, like, look, I'm not, I'm shameless in it. I loved Cyberpunk. I'm yeah. fully accepting of all the launch nonsense that happened, and I can be critical of all of that. But my time I spent in that game, it was what I wanted it to be. Every in every single way, I it wasn't it didn't disappoint me in any single way, and that's not me saying go play this game. It's amazing, or go play this game because uh, it's, it's perfect. Look, it's not. But for me, I loved it. And as I cleared everything, everything's done, and I started up another character just to play through it as a different kind of character. I was playing mm. it as a male this time to get the different romance options and all that nonsense. And even I got to a point where I kind of went, I just I don't want to do this. Yeah, and that's not on the game. That's just on. I put so much into my first character, and had everything, and played it the pretty much the exact way I wanted. It was a bit. There was a couple things I I wish I'd upgraded one other stat point instead of one this. But other than that, I had the character I wanted, and I was gonna. You know what? I can't bring myself to play through this again. Yeah, I feel like something's missing. However, you have your perfect. It looks incredible on the OLED. It really oh, yeah. does. Oh my goodness. When you stand still. <laughs> when, you, when, when you stand still at 4K on an OLED with all the ray tracing and all the shits and everything enabled, it look it's the nicest picture I've ever looked at. Nice. And it just it shows how badly optimized that game actually is. I still can't get it to run yeah, anywhere decently. Like with ray tracing enabled, and if you want the cyberpunk experience, you want ray tracing enabled. Mm. That's, you know what the funny like, thing is? Ray tracing, ray, so, ray sorry, tracing does fuck all. It, ray tracing does yeah. fuck all to my performance. It's the crowd like, stuff. It's, on crazy. Or off. it's the crowd stuff, and everything. It's else. Just, yeah, it's. I just can't get there. It's, it's weird that point. it does that for you though, because when I turn off ray tracing, I pretty much. Not double my frames, but I get about sixty-five to seventy percent extra. And yeah, it, I, I found the kind of incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I found, I found my GPU kind of can do it. It's your CPU. Yeah. I found the kind of incredible though that that running at sixty FPS, even with ray tracing not turned up to the um, heavens, it still runs four K not great 60 to 70 whereas i plugged in death stranding and ran it at 4k with mm. dls dlss enabled and i was hitting nearly 200 frames a second i had to cap my frames i was like well kojima you make good video games <laughs> whether it's people like them or not whether people like them Dude. or not you optimize your games well you know how to make games same with doom eternal like yeah. i downloaded that because i had the update and i could go 4k uh ultra everything ray tracing on dlss off yeah. and still get 120 frames plus dlss is a magical thing though it really is yeah when i turned it on it went up to like 180 yeah, nearly 200 but with it off dlss like, great. dlss is a magician but anyway yeah, yeah. we'll get to that state eventually we'll get that. I just I'm looking forward to the next gen update of Cyberpunk coming out because then it means that they will start releasing. I'm not gonna say new Newer content, content, but yeah. they'll start releasing the cut content from the game. They'll be back in their cycle then. Yeah. Like it's it's like they've they've hit an impasse. They have to go back yeah. and it hasn't look been over a good. It. Yeah. Seven months, eight months for all the when is that you actually the next gen upgrade? Second half of the year, which we're now in. So okay, any time in the any next time. three to four months, I'd imagine. Um, like if you have it on PS, if you own a PlayStation Five, Cyberpunk runs very well on a PS Five. Like it hasn't got the bells and whistles of ray tracing enabled yet mm. or DLSS, but, but for stable. a but for a stable experience, it runs perfectly fine on PS Five, and that's me having watched someone play a hundred and sixty hours of it. It runs yeah. very well on PS Five. Like it, it, I think it, I would and, wait. and that's not me being biased or favoritism yeah. towards it. It it does run 
satisfaction to a satisfactory level on PS5. But yeah, you have everything done on PS on PC. That's the only thing. Yeah, yeah. If it was cross save, I'd hundred percent bite the bullet and get it for PlayStation. Yeah, but I'm yeah. surprised it's not. I'm really just happy. like fucking Square it's, Enix. It's probably Avengers. a Sony thing. It's, it's probably stupid Sony bullshit. blocking it. It has to be. As like always. if if Avengers is the exact same. Yeah, it's Sony. But anyway, stupid. Anyway. But if you're on Xbox, you can just use the smart transfer save, and it'll do it. Xbox probably. don't do good things for consumers. Don't be silly. No, nah, they're only a business. Anyway, I think that's gonna come to a natural end. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was. It's good. Glad you guys it, got it, to talk about Returnal together. I mean, when we'll you play it, we were doing a full review of it, so I hope you're looking I forward to that. Breakdown. I can't wait yeah. for that. I, I want to. I think Demon Souls is gonna be first though, because I'm just dying to play that game. <laughs> you're I, more than you're more think, than welcome to yeah. try it. Instead of paying sixty quid for it, you're more than welcome to try it. I'm getting it for my birthday anyway, which is the that's, end of the month. That's so soon. Fuck. It's only. I need to get saving. <sighs> No, <laughs> no, um, yeah, I'm I'm getting it for then anyway. So just gotta wait, and then maybe Returnal after that, because I know I can jump into Spider Man whenever. Yeah, yeah. See, Miles Morales is a weird one. I don't even. I think that you get the disc. But I think the disc is only there for show. I think it's actually still a digital download. Serious? <laughs> it, I think it's a weird one like that, yeah. Okay, now. That's another thing, actually. The mm. download speed on the PS5 is ridiculous compared to PS4. Yeah. Like, Oh, it is. It's, it's not. It's nowhere near as bad. Oh, the, the, there's no copying or anything like that as well, which is... It's a little bit of copying. No, there is. A no, a li yeah, but not in terms of three hours later, and yeah. you can't put your PlayStation on rest mode. Um... But just in terms of even installing discs and downloading yeah. updates, it's mm. so, it's so good. Better. Like, I installed Avengers better. on the disc, and it had an, uh, an update, and it initially said nine hours left, and I'd done it in an hour. Like, and that was a good 60 gigs. Uh, which, for me, enough. is fucking yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, sorry. All right, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we wrap, it up there. we wrap it up there for another week. Um, that was episode 24. Um... Hope you enjoyed it. Me and Steven gushing about Returnal. Dylan breaking the rules as usual. But it's yeah, what he's I like the game from last year. Sorry. <laughs> no, not allowed like games from last but year. But it, if I didn't mention that, I wouldn't have known that I can get it with cross progression. Yeah, so. it was worth it. It was worth it. it so yeah, a, thank you for I mean, listening. Yeah. I've been Kevin. Yeah. We've been I us. still am. <laughs> yeah, we've been the other two. Yeah. <laughs> two friends and Kev. See you next week. Yeah, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Forza Italia.